Europe Day is celebrated on the 9th of May each year, the anniversary of the signing of the Schumann Declaration. And once again, however, the anniversary unfortunately fell and falls during at a time of war in Europe. I would therefore take the opportunity, as I'm sure others would, to reiterate this Parliament's categorical condemnation of Putin's unprovoked aggression, which has destroyed the lives of so many Ukrainians since the country's illegal invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. And the Russian government's reckless actions during that invasion have, of course, also directly resulted in the death of many of its own forces. The European Union was established to promote peace and cooperation between Europe's independent nations. I, of course, very much hope that one day soon Scotland can count herself among these independent European nations. But for the moment, Europe Day represents an opportunity for us to reflect on the European Union's core aspirations, as well as the challenges it faces in today's uh, landscape. Peace and cooperation are values we must pursue and prioritise, particularly in a period of political polarisation, when misinformation and therefore mistrust can be rife and, unless checked, ultimately pose a threat to democracy itself. The shared European values of human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, rule of law, human rights are ones which I hope every individual across this chamber would share, no matter their position on Scotland's future or indeed on the European Union. However, I cannot resist saying that those who continue arguing against even rejoining the single market or re-establishing a freedom of movement of people are taking an extreme stance and one which I don't claim to be able to comprehend. It is a stance which I personally would counsel all parties not to humour much further. Just a few weeks ago, yet more new expensive and complicated import controls came into force as a direct consequence of Brexit, causing further damage to Scotland's businesses and our economic interest. More EU businesses are ceasing trade with the UK altogether due to the additional expense and bureaucratic headache which the trading relationship now involves. The UK has already suffered the largest five-year decline in goods trades since uh, comparable records began in 1997, with the volume of UK goods imports and exports being 7.4% smaller than in 2018. Exports from my own constituency, particularly of fresh seafood, have at times suffered significantly due to the complex, time-consuming and expensive checks now required to be made on every box for every journey to mainland Europe. Any small error can result in thousands of pounds of produce being held up and sometimes ultimately discarded. In any case, Presiding Officer, I am very conscious that the bulk of those roads in my constituency, which are wide enough to drive two cars past each other without stopping, are largely the product of the EU structural and investment funds. The UK government committed to match the EU structural funding post-Brexit in a programme they insisted would be better tailored to our economy. However, we have found ourselves overlooked and shortchanged. Meanwhile, the UK government, and as far as I can see, the main UK opposition, refuses to move an inch from their opposition to EU membership. So I'm afraid that um, even with the potential for a, a new government in Westminster, uh, this tunnel vision on anything related to the EU or the single market looks firmly set to continue. Last month, both Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak rejected the European Commission's proposals for a post-Brexit youth mobility deal, for instance, which would have allowed those aged between 18 and 30 to live, study or work in one EU country for up to four years and for uh, young EU citizens to come, to come to the UK on the same basis. Presiding officer, Brexit was unquestionably uh, an act of uh, cultural and economic vandalism. Scotland remains a steadfastly European nation, bound to our neighbours by a long history of cultural, social and economic ties. And whilst uh, external powers have uh, forced us to leave the political European community, I'm proud to say that Scotland's esprit européen is something no external power can take away. I fear I may have annoyed one of your predecessors... Uh, yeah, it's Ariel Street, yeah. I'm grateful to Stephen Kerr. I'm really confused about the external powers he's referring to. We had a referendum and the United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union. What external powers is he referring to? Is he referring by chance to England, Wales and Northern Ireland? Alistair Allen. I'm referring to the fact that the country I represent in this parliament and have the honour to, to, to live in voted two-thirds to remain in the European Union. Um, 
I fear, as well as annoying Mr Kerr, I may have annoyed one of your predecessors, uh, or the, the, pre the presiding officer's predecessor, uh, when I and others spoke up in this chamber some time ago to make the case for the European flag to continue to fly outside our national parliament. I have no regrets about that, and I'm pleased to see it still flying. For me, it is a symbol of hope that in the not-too-distant future, Scotland will be able to rejoin the EU family as a member state. But more immediately, it is a clear sign that we want to celebrate Europe Day and all the ideas that that represents.